In this video, I will show you the functionality and use of DataPoint. DataPoint is a presentation point add-on that can be used on top of Microsoft PowerPoint, the presentation tool. A normal PowerPoint presentation is static. So when you want to update some information on your slide, you have to open the presentation, go to the slide, select the shape, and then edit the text of that shape. By using DataPoint technology, you can connect that shape to a data source. So then you can leave the slideshow running and the information will be updated in real time while the slideshow is running. Or next time when you open the presentation, the new latest information is shown on your slide. So let me show you how DataPoint is working. So after the installation of DataPoint, you get a new DataPoint item here in the PowerPoint ribbon with some more options. So let me first go to the first slide. I have here a presentation with some five slides and some images on there. Nothing special, everything is regular PowerPoint. So I select this first slide and I have a normal text box on here. And I want to display a clock. I don't have a data connection yet to a data source, so I'm going to use this clock only. So you can see here in this shapes group, you have this clock option, which is enabled because I have selected this shape here. So I click clock and I can choose to display the date. I can select the second text box and then click clock again and choose to display the current time like this. When I run the slideshow now, I already will see the first benefit of data point. Normally a PowerPoint slideshow is completely static when you are running it. So here you see already the first benefit of real time dynamic presentations with data point. So that first action, that first slide was very basic. So let's show some more dynamic information on the slide. I'm going here to a browser and I have a RSS feed of ABC News. That's just a website that I want to use. I have here a list of all the RSS feeds that you can choose from this news source. So I want to display, for instance, the travel headlines. So I'm selecting this RSS feed and I'm copying here the URL like this. So now I'm going back to data point. I'm on the second slide. I go to data point here. I have a connections group here in the data point ribbon with the list button. I click on this. I select the news RSS data provider and I click add query. I'm pasting here the RSS feed that I want to display. You see here the default 300 seconds as a data refresh rate. So this means that every five minutes, DataPoint will revisit the RSS feed for new updated information. So I click OK, and now DataPoint is collecting all the articles from that RSS feed. It's taking a little bit more time because it's also downloading the featured images of all the articles. So when it's done, you get here a preview of all the information. And that's basically what data point is doing. You first have to set up a connection to a data source. So we are here. Let me rename this and call this travel info. I click OK and I'm back on my slide. So I have my text box here, select the text box. And now I have some more options here in this shapes group because I have a data connection. So I click text box here. And you see here a list of all the data connections that we have set up in this presentation. At this time, it's only one because there was only one data connection, the RSS feed. So I'm selecting this and then I get a list of all the columns that are available in the data source. I want to display here the title. So I navigate to the title column and I select this. By default, it's the first row and you can see already a preview of the first news article. When I click OK, I'm binding dynamically the information of the first article to this text box. And I can do this again for the description field, like this. OK, now do some more. I want to display a featured image. So I'm going to the normal insert menu of PowerPoint. I click pictures. I'm inserting 
a normal image, a normal static image as you would always do in PowerPoint. I can close the design IDs. I'm selecting this picture, going back to data point, selecting the picture button here. Do I want to convert? Yes, of course. I want to display the thumbnail URL. And here I have a preview of the image associated with the article. When I click OK, my default picture is replaced by this dynamic information coming from the RSS feed. So let me do some cosmetic changes. I'm sending it to the back. Uh, let's select these text boxes here. Use a white. Make it bold. And maybe we can change the font. Like this. Okay. And now when I run the slideshow, you will see that my clock is updated here. I can click next. I'm going to the next slide where I see the first article of the RSS feed. So basically this is displaying just only one article. So let me stop the slideshow. I'm going back to this slide. And now I want to display some more articles on this slide. So basically you can copy this slide and bind the second article to the next slide and so on. But we have a more interesting option in data point. Let me show you. I'm going to the scrolling button here of the slide group and I'm activating for this connection the data scrolling. So I will use a step size of one row and a step time of five seconds. When I click OK now and I run my slideshow again, go to the next slide, and now for five seconds you will see the first article. Five seconds for the next article and so on. Let's do some more trick with data point. I'm clicking the refresh button, going back to the initial first article, and I'm saving my presentation. Let me show you an interesting feature of data point as well. So data point, as you have seen it now, was ideal for displaying information in real time on your slideshow. You can also use data point as an assistant for your data driven presentation for reporting. So let me click the snapshot button here, and it's basically creating a new presentation with the latest information, but then disconnected from the data source. So you see the first slide here where we had the uh, controls, and then you see some 25 slides of all the news articles. And this is a temporary file that you can save and then send out to your colleagues and customers. So I'm going to close this snapshot presentation again so that we are back on the first dynamic presentation where we control everything. Let's have some more fun with weather. I am on this slide now. So I go back to data point, list connections, I select here a data provider called Weather by Yahoo. I click Add Query. Let me change the location. So we want to display the weather, the current weather of San Diego in California. We can choose between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We can set a icon set. Icon set one is an icon set with white icons. Icon set two is an icon set with black icons. We have a default refresh rate of 900 seconds, which is every 15 minutes it will visit the Yahoo weather engine for new information. So I click OK. It is collecting the information from the Yahoo weather service. And this is a preview of the data. Let's rename this into San Diego and click OK. So I'm selecting this text box again. 
text box linking. Not the travel information for the IRSS feed, but the weather information I want to display. And I want to display the condition now temperature. That's the column that I need to display. So 61. So 61 degrees Fahrenheit, the current temperature in San Diego. So let's do some more. Going back into the text box. I'm selecting the text prefix here and I can say currently and then the degree sign Fahrenheit like this. And I can combine the numeric information that I get back from the weather service together with the text to be displayed before and after. This is a real time saver. And we want to display the condition now text in this text box. Of course, we want to display a picture. I'm inserting a default picture right now. Let me close this and resize to a smaller one like this, placing it here. Back to data point, I click the picture. Do you want to convert this picture into a data point picture? Yes, I want to. San Diego sweater, I'm choosing the now icon and I click OK. And now we have the information there. I can duplicate this. So I select this picture. I click the picture option here. Switching to day one. Let me see icon. Day two icon. Day three icon. Duplicate this text box. And we can choose to display the day one day. Day two, day. Day three, day. Like so. And now we have completed a complete up-to-date weather slide in PowerPoint with data point in, what was it? Three minutes. So that was fun with RSS news and weather information, but now let's go into the real business of DataPoint. We want to display some company or sales or production information on your slide. So I'm going to use a connection to an Excel file. And basically an Excel file is just the same like a database. You have a file, a data sheet, you have a range of information and basically the information that's returned from the data sheet is exactly the same as a data table of a SQL server or another database connection. So basically you get a data set with rows and columns. So let's first set up a connection to a file. Clicking the browse here, I'm using this Excel file here. I'm clicking the Add Query. I see a list of all my sheets of that Excel file. I'm selecting the Products Data Sheet. The first row contains the field names, a default refresh rate of 60 seconds. We can lower this value to every second if needed um, for your project. Click OK. And I'm renaming my Products. 
And there we have the information. So let me use this normal text box again. Put it here. Duplicating. Placing this one there. Get rid of this one. So I'm selecting this first one. Going to data point, text box. I'm switching here to the Excel connection, my products. I want to display the product name like so. Have my text box for the pricing. Selecting the list price, that's 18. I want to format this as a currency, like so. Two decimals maybe, and we have this information here. Let me maybe make it a bit bigger here, and write a line, like so. And this should be left aligned. Okay. Imagine that you are creating a menu board. So I'm copying here. My information. And I'm reselecting all the shapes except the first one because I have to increment the row number and I can click plus one here and you get this. I can click one plus one again to increment the row numbers, like so. And of course, I can always go back into the text box properties and I can manually switch to row number five. That's taking a little bit more time than using the shortcut, but that's an option as well, like so. Okay, so this slide was completely done by using text boxes. We can use something different, but much faster. So I'm adding a new slide. Changing the layout to blank. I'm inserting a new four column table like so. Data point, table properties. I want to display the my products information. Also, I check this option, copy the column names to the first row of the table and I click OK. So now I get this information. The first four columns of the data set are copied into this table in PowerPoint. Maybe I don't want to display these numbers here. So I'm going back into table, special column selection. I'm selecting rows three to four and I click OK. And now I just have to delete these columns here because we don't need them anymore. Let me maybe show you the power of the data scrolling again, like so. Click data scrolling. I'm enabling the data scrolling and now I'm going to use a step size of five rows. So when I run the slideshow now again, I will see for five seconds long, I will see the first five data rows. After five seconds, I will see the next five data rows and so on. So I can display all my product information by just using one slide and one table. And we move on to the last slide of this presentation. Let me drop this image here from this slide. And we have two images. So we have a needle and we have the background, like so. And they are placed on top of each other. So I have the needle image selected at this time. It's positioned at the minimum on the scale. So I'm going to data point and I'm using the meter option here. I'm using my products, going to the list price again, which was 18. I'm going to change the rotation of my shape. And I know from
for instance, that the value range that can be returned by my data set will be a value between 0 and, let's say, 60. I'm clicking this button here, use current rotation of the shape as minimum rotation, because that's the position of the arrow, like so. I click OK, something is happening, and I'm now rotating further on the needle to the maximum position, like so. I'm going back into the meter, and I'm just clicking here, use current rotation of the shape as maximum rotation, like so. I'm clicking OK, and now my value 18 is completely and perfectly positioned on a value on the scale of 0 and maximum 60, as we have entered these information at the meter options. This was a quick introduction to data point for PowerPoint. Let me know if you have further questions. When you click the list button of the connection groups, then you get a list of data providers that you can use to establish a connection to a data source. Where you have some data point providers like a Facebook page to display the number of likes of your Facebook page, the RSS feed of a news website, weather by dark sky, that's a weather service. Weather by Yahoo is another weather service. You can make a connection to your Google Calendar or your Google Sheets to get some financial information. Or you can use the Microsoft group here to connect to a Microsoft Access database or a SQL Server database. Or just use it to make a connection to an Excel file and read out a data sheet and a range. Use a Microsoft Exchange or Microsoft Outlook connection to display your email messages of a specific mailbox or display events from your calendar. Or get some information from a SharePoint list. Or use a Microsoft Yammer connection to display some social news from this network. Use the MySQL connection to make a connection to the popular MySQL databases or an Oracle database. Or whatever you exotic database that you might connect to by using the ODBC, which stands for the Open Database Connectivity, or the OLEDB. With those two, you can address all other types of databases or data sources. Then you have, to, of course, the text files, where you also have the tab delimited files and the comma separated files, and so on. XML files, Twitter information, you can display live tweets from a given user or a search term, you can display JSON information, connect to an OData data source and display that information. In the data point industrial edition, you can connect to a OPC data source and display manufacturing information. And, and basically, you, you can have one level, like here for news, where you have a query and that's it. That's just the URL pointing to your newsfeed. And for more complex databases or connections, for instance, a Microsoft SQL Server, you first have a connection to a database. And after that, you can add queries. And those queries can point to a table, a view, a custom SQL statement, or a store procedure on your database, and so on. So that's why you can have two levels of connectivity, the data connection and the query level.